One little animal that I think gets totally overlooked for its coolness is the snail. I mean, they take their homes with them wherever they go. They don't bark too loudly. Training is probably tricky, but you can always find them by just following that slime trail. Well, now science is working hard to help preserve our tiny sucker-bottomed friends. Innovation is out to protect endangered snails, tracking them wherever they may escargo. Here's Allie Ward to explain. This little guy with a cool backpack looks innocent enough, but he's a type of snail that has decimated entire endemic populations of other snails in places like Tahiti, except for one. This high-tech tracker was installed by a team of researchers from Michigan who wanted to understand why, when so many species of snails were wiped out, one survived. I met professors Dierman Okule and David Blau in Michigan to learn more. In, I guess, a nutshell or a snail shell, what are we looking at here? In the mid 20th century, these snails were introduced throughout a lot of the tropics. This is a giant African land snail. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. This is French Polynesia, right? So French eat snails. They escaped and became agricultural pests. So these can chow down your backyard garden overnight, essentially. Wow. Okay. The US agricultural scientists came up with a solution. They introduced a killer snail, a carnivorous snail, the rosy wolf snail. A rosy wolf snail. Yes. Got it. So here are our native snails. Correct. We have an introduced species that are picking off agriculture. Correct. So they introduce something to get the thing that is eating their plants, which then starts to decimate native snails. Correct. Except for the Partula hyalina. This white-shelled species is a sole survivor. To better understand the survivor snail, the team started by finding the right sensor to gather data. It's that backpack I was talking about earlier. What did you think when you first heard, hey, we need some sensors to track some snails? We had been making these sensors for a little while, but we've never really deployed them, and this seemed like the perfect fit. How small are we talking here? We're talking maybe one or two millimeters in size. Wow. Is there a battery source in there? Yes, it's actually, it's a complete little computer. It has a battery that can power it, as well as a little solar panel that can recharge the battery. Scientists place the sensors on the leaves around the Partula hyalina snails, the survivors, and on the backs of the rosy wolf snails, the predators. Most snails hate sunlight, they're like vampires. So they come out at night or when it's overcast. But the whiter your shell is, the more light you refract and the cooler you stay. After following lots of snails, the team of six concluded that the white shell color indeed allowed the survivors solar refuge from the predator snails. The survivors lived in edge habitats, and the light intensity environment of the survivors was more than that of the predators. For the Partula hyalina, that meant survival. You're seeing more and more technology come to the front when it comes to conservation. Yeah, absolutely. And I like to make a picture for invertebrates. Invertebrates have been neglected so far, and it's not just snails. It could be spiders, it could be insects. And finally, the creepy, crawly, slimy guys will have a little bit of love from technology, creepy, too. Creepy, crawly, and slimy. No, I, that's what other people say. I love a snail. Are Look, you kidding me? I love I mean, a spider. These are not alone delicious, but they're also aesthetically pleasing. 